This Age of Radio podcast is brought to you by The Bazaar. The Bazaar is the Age of Radio affiliate store, and right now, The Bazaar has a special offer on The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription video on-demand service with thousands of in-depth videos taught by the world's greatest professors. You'll always find something fascinating to learn about. With categories ranging from history to travel and everything in between, there's something for everyone. If you go to ageofradio.org forward slash dark windows, there's an offer to get The Great Courses Plus free for 14 days. Stay ahead in life. Start your access today with 11,000 plus video and audio lectures on a range of topics. I'm Kevin H. I'm Kevin C. And I'm a Seth. And this is the Dark, Dark Windows, Windows Podcast. So just a disclaimer, we are going to talk about some things that people might not be super comfortable with. We're going to use some language, a language that people are not going to be super comfortable with. That's adult language. So, Expletives. So sit back. Relax. And enjoy the show. Or not. That's cool too. We want to start out by saying a special thank you to our sponsor, Studio Headphones. Studio offers some of the best quality sound and best built headphones on the market without the outrageous prices that other brands offer. They offer a variety of different styles, including over-the-ear, wired earbuds, and completely wireless Bluetooth buds. The two newest models are the Klar, which are over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones that offer 30 hours of playtime. Hold on. 30 hours continuous playtime without being recharged. And the Tolve, which are totally wireless Bluetooth earbuds, that offer seven hours of playtime in a case that holds four additional charges for the buds. So check out studio.com where you will find some of the best quality headphones and earbuds on the market. And if you enter Dark Windows 15 at checkout, they will take 15% off your entire order. So if you have 12 cultists that you would like to paint, head on over to GameEnvy.net where you can actually grab yourself a sweet hobby holder it, the hobby holder itself is a multi-purpose tool. It's a handle and base combination unit that runs off a soda bottle cap. So you could put those 12 little cultists on each bottle cap and you could put that bottle cap right on top of that 360 degree rotating base and you can paint all that fine, sweet, delicious detail. You pick out that, you pick out in the colors you like, and then you throw that beautiful stuff right into the checkout cart. You throw in some brush bash and a paint puck or any other variety of hobby tools in there. Put in the promo code BROADSTONE at checkout and you will save yourself 10% off the entire order. Pop What's it. going on, everybody? Oh, you know, I'm fucking tired from moving my house. Thank you, boys, again for helping me today. No problem. So and we're back. So what are you talking about this week? Episode number two. No, part two. Part, part two. two. Episode 61, if my calculations are correct. We're in that ballpark. Yep. Part dos. In that field. Anyway, it's part two of what, though? Part two of 12 tribes. Uh, these fuckers again. That's that's where I put in that little, uh, you know, painting your 12 cultists. I know. That's a 40K reference. There's a lot of games with cultists, though. Yeah, but. Frostgrave's got them. 40K. That's true. Yeah. I have not brought it up in a while. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> sure. I yeah. have no clue. Doesn't matter. Let's talk about these guys <laughs> yeah. that have been very interesting to talk about. Yeah, let's yeah. You kind of had a change of heart with them here about three quarters of the way through last week. Yeah, well, because like I said, it's different for me as somebody that goes in there mainly for the food items, and like they're you know they're mm-hmm. nice to anybody when you're going up front and whatever. But finding out more of the information, right? And a little bit of the, like the stuff I knew was like okay, yeah. The child labor thing, who hasn't worked for their parents or who hasn't had a job yeah, when you're like yeah. 12 mowing lawns or whatever, or sh- shoveling yeah. snow and, or, you know, especially around here, we're going to a local farm and working there because, you know, that's what we do. It was like, okay, that doesn't mean anything. Okay. One of the, the raids, if you want to speak, say whatever around here was during a political like event. So yeah. 
it was one of those things that I was like, yeah, you can't really count that because a lot of times when there's anything politics wise, they always have this one big event to change the course of everything, which now gets everybody to follow that said person, i.e. a current person. Never mind. But it was just like, and then talking to you about it off air and getting more into what we're going to talk about today, doing my own like little research on it. It's like, I was surprised as oh, shit. Oh yeah. I didn't realize that because it was like, yeah, they make good food. Yeah. They got good tea. Yeah, they do everything in house, man. They farm to table. I like farm to table. Like I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, on board yeah. with that. Nothing wrong with that. And then it was like, oh, oh. Now I'm reading between the lines. I'm reading the super fine, ultra mighty fine print where you have your glasses on and your magnifying glasses on and those sweet cheaters that connect in the middle with a magnet. Those are sweet, though. Yeah, dude. I wish I could like get that a pair dude of those. From Tango and Cash. No, the ones that you wear around oh. here that come together and they click in the middle like those old people wear it now. Yeah. I want a pair of those, but I'm too fucking blind. I still like the guy from Tango and Cash is dealing with the fucking, like, thing. The magnifiers when he's working on the van yeah. and shit. Well, but exactly. That's pretty, that was pretty cool. Like, having stuff like that and you're like, oh, wait, I got to give up all of this. I got to do all this. Okay, well, that's typical. Oh. Yeah, I was quite Oh, surp- I don't know what that means. I'm going to have to talk to a lawyer about this guy. Yeah, I was quite surprised to get that text message you know, that you sent to both of us. I was like... Whoa, Seth's changed his mind? Holy shit. Yeah, Seth doesn't change his mind much, but no. when I know I'm in the wrong, I will look it up and research, and when I find more stuff out, and, like, I, when we have topics like this, it sticks in my head, so I'm like, I'm going to do my research, so I sit at my, my, my research chair, the toilet, <laughs> and I will do my, my research. My and porcelain I will, research chair. No, it's – okay, I have a toddler that runs around and no, will I, harass me whenever no. I'm doing anything. The bathroom is the one place where it's like, I can lock the door. Take that, kid. And I will sit there and I will literally read articles. And if you look on Wikipedia, you know, everybody can mess with information. Yeah. There's still articles that I fucked with when I was in high school that are still on Wikipedia today and that they yeah. actually locked down. But finding, like, more information of people who were there that got out and um, outside sources of family members who have people that they care about that are in this situation that can't get out. Like, they have they don't know where they are currently yeah. because, yeah, you – like, a little bit of a backstory. A kid that I went to college with that I used to party with very heavily that was heavily into drugs like I was, heavily into partying. He joined them. And we were very close. And when I was like, dude, this is fantastic. You're sober now. You got rid of all this stuff. You came from a very troubled childhood. And now you have this family unit you're looking for. They give you everything you were looking for. You have, you're have, you sober. You have you know a stable relationship. You have a family unit. This is amazing. Well, when I would keep going there to visit them, they, I never really paid attention to it. But he was only allowed to talk for a few minutes and had to get mm-hmm. back into it. The most recent time I went back to see if he was there, he's gone now, and they won't tell me where he's at. And there's no way to call him because, obviously, when you're part of that community, everything is filtered pretty much through the higher-ups. Yeah. So it was like, if I want to call him, I now have to search wherever he's at. And then when I call, there's a higher-up who controls that phone or controls that mail, and information is either redacted or phone calls aren't just be like, oh, sorry, he's busy. Oh, sorry, he's busy. That's what I was hearing. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, he moved. I'm like, oh, where'd he go? Well, I'm not really allowed to tell you because it's just privacy. It's, quote, yeah. unquote, family privacy. Yeah. it's, it's And it's I was kind like, of fucked up. that's what kind of started changing things. It was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I thought it was just they didn't want to say for that one reason because he was like, oh, well, you know, we just don't want to say. And then they find out. It's like, no, this is how they keep the hooks in. Because if they find somebody, you know, because originally he wasn't from Vermont. He was from a totally another state. He was from, uh, I think, Minnesota or something like that and came to school over here because, you know, likes the north, likes cold. And now it's like, oh, wow, this is okay. Like, yeah. I now don't know where he's at. All I can do is hope he's happy and safe. And and this group is kind of more, some may have heard about this group, this this organization of uh scientologists scientology <laughs> is like is yeah make sure to go jump like on a couch this. yeah <laughs> what i'm excited i'm in love i like jumping on couches i'm four yeah. feet tall i need a couch well the, those people are just like just like that they have the organization called the sea org which yeah oh if you haven't heard about them look into it because well, the good it's thing i gotta fucked. do some paperwork later it's kind of like uh it's like this where like what you're talking about 
where they get into it and then they get moved and then when someone tries to track them down they get moved again well yeah it's a good way to keep the hooks in because if say for instance in his situation if i kept going there i'm now a negative influencer on his old past life even though i'm sober now i've been sober since i graduated college thankfully for who i'm with and a few choice people that are in my life now it just makes i'm that negative influencer that shows them that there's still Mm -hmm. life out there there's still someone from my past there's still someone who's not a part of the collective yeah so God fucking Borg. <laughs> I, I do actually have a couple um, stories yeah. that actually well, – one of them is of a person that tried to get out, uh, but we'll get into that. Yeah, let's so, get into this main meat of this shit. So what, last week we left off, uh, I had said that the, the group had actually – had been formed and everything. They had their whole – we're Set learning up. about the douchebags manifesto. Yeah, yeah, this whole manifesto of how it, you know everything should be run, um, how kids should be, how women should be, all this stuff. Well, and I said they moved to lovely, sunny, bright Island Pond, Vermont. Yeah. And I was like, wait, you're talking about Vermont, dude. We're <laughs> the New England of England. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of works because you know it's always cloudy and rainy in England, and that's true. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the weather here yes. fucking sucks. Yeah, it's done but, nothing but rain for the last two goddamn days. Oh. I love it, man. I'm not getting any melanoma or sunburns. It just sucks because I'm missing work on it. <laughs> that's true. So they set up shop in, like I said, Island Pond, Vermont, which is in nor- the northeastern portion of the state. Yep, way the fuck up there. Way the fuck up there. Where Might as well be Canada way the fuck up there almost. Yeah, it's damn near close to that. There's basically nothing up there. As Kevin has referred to several times that like five people live there. Uh, yeah. And like that's probably not too far from the truth. Some of those towns up there where they have maybe a hundred people. Yeah, Bar- Barnett. Some, which some is up actually that. have like total of ten. Yeah. Dude, that's like where G.G. Allen lived. It was like a small ass town. Hell, my hometown has 30 people in it. And, like, 20 of them are actually related to me. I mean, we've got maybe, what, like, 2,500 in town here in Pittsburgh? Something like that? 2,500, 3,000? It's it's not a lot. No. Uh, So this location fit what what they wanted. Very remote. Nobody's really there at all. Um, And I've actually driven past the road where the 12 tribes was... uh, or was or is still I'm not quite sure, um, and I believe it was called. I'm not quite sure of the name, but I think it was Twelve Nations Road. Could be wrong. <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't help it. I had to. <laughs> I was like, "Oh God, where are you going with this?" Yeah, there you go. So anyway, on uh, June twelfth, nineteen eighty four, in the early morning hours. In the lovely town of Island Pond, the state police conducted a raid on the homestead. They acted based off of uh, information obtained by uh, former members of the group. Uh, the troopers uh, acted up on allegations of child abuse by the group, which, you know. This from- is the part where I was, like, talking about before where it's like, yeah, okay, is this because they're working? I was working with my dad when I was like twelve, like working on furnaces. I was well, working I in the fucking kitchen when I was fourteen, like yeah, around, and then, like fryers well, and shit. No, yeah, but this was totally different. This was not what I was expecting this is to being find. Beaten and yeah, stuff yeah. Like yeah. That. Uh, they removed over one hundred children from the location and put them in the care of child services. Well, this didn't last very long because the judge overturned the case, all of the cases. And said that the warrant was unconstitutional because the attorneys didn't have enough information gathered on all the children to actually keep them. Um, the children were found to not have any signs of abuse on them at all when they were examined. Right. And that was actually another part of it um, that came out later that's, that that um, when they were taken, they were actually – uh, photographed, which uh, yeah, I mean, wasn't that... which they weren't supposed to be at all because I guess uh, legally they were they hit they needed to have 
more substantial information and permission. But I can see why they did it. If you're getting allegations of child abuse, you need to have evidence of it actually happening for a court case if you have to. Yeah, and the worst part is, too, with a situation like this, you have a bunch of like allegations happening, which we just alluded to. But the kids aren't going to say anything for fear of retribution. Right. And the adults there aren't going to say anything because it's a male-driven society, and they're not going to say shit. And the women are pretty much put in a subservient role, as alluded to by this man's douchebag book. And they're not going to say shit because they're going to fear of the retribution itself. So it's like, okay, we have we have nothing. We're fucked. Yeah. I, we can I, only do what we can but and hope for the best. I right. guess apparently there was – also allegations that like kids were killed stuff like that but that was never substantiated as well right um but this but wasn't would, the... would you be surprised no if one of these beatings went just like a hair too far and it turned into a kid actually dying no. or Shit not like even that dying just all the fucking time. not even dying going to the hospital for like a broken bone or something along right. those lines but they don't they don't go to the hospital they don't yeah, yeah they're like fucked, man. hey guess what walk it off drink some water there you go mm-hmm. no, I'm curious, is it kind of like the whole like Christian sciences thing where they don't believe in modern medicine? Yeah. Shit like that? Okay. Also, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel there's another other. Yeah, there's a couple of them that are like that, that are like, we don't we don't go to hospitals, we don't visit doctors, we can pray cancer away, shit like that. And, yeah, and then I know there's uh, one religion that uses, uh, they won't accept blood transfusions. I believe that's the Jehovah's. That would not surprise me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm cool with whatever you want to do religiously, I don't really care. But there's some shit like, you know, the health of your children that you should probably maybe let that shit go a little bit and, you know, go to a doctor. Yeah. yeah you know. But everyone's faith is different, though. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's just my opinion is, you know, yeah. just your kids sick, go to a fucking doctor. Uh, so now this wasn't the last time that the tribe would be in the news for reports of child abuse. In 2013, across the pond in Sydney um, – there was actually allegations. Uh, it was reported in the Sydney Morning Herald uh, that told similar similar stories of members who had been had escaped the group, and they had allegations of abuse. Hmm. Um, Do you have any specific names on there? No, I don't. Okay, I was curious to see if it if it lines up with anything that uh, that our buddy Tristan uh, Tristan Pope sent us. Oh, because he's he lives Name in Australia. Drop. And he sent us a bunch of articles about it because they were, I guess, they're pretty prevalent over there. Um, but yeah, he he did some pretty de- some pretty uh, deep digging. So they yeah, th- th- so the allegations were you know came across in in this, um, and they also and also in the specific standard, there was actually reports of children allegedly being beaten multiple times a day. Jesus Christ. You know, which... I'd probably be one of those kids that would get beaten multiple times a day because I'm just an asshole and I don't like being told yeah, what to do. These kids are being beat, you know, because... Their they hair's out talk, of shape. Yeah, they may have talked to another kid or, you know, they did something that they weren't supposed to do. You know, just stupid, dumb shit. But, you know, instead of letting kids be being, kids... Yeah. You know, they, they... Well, they don't want that. They want robots. And, you know, it's it's weird because I pull, I finally get that article up, and the uh, woman that they're talking to through the whole thing, one of the big things that she got beaten for like multiple times was when she was playing with other kids. Like, you know, you put your arms out and you pretend you're an airplane. Yeah, she got the shit kicked out of her for that. Yeah, well, like I said, because you, you, it's you the can't... whole inanimate object yeah. thing, which is fucking ridiculous. It's... I thought it was because she was making acting like even though you're acting like a plane, it still looks like you're being crucified. No, and that's a frowned upon thing with some. No, it was it was just for pretending to be an airplane and making noises and shit. She got fucking wailed on for it. <laughs> These people suck. Uh, so the the story that the Boston Herald wrote cited numerous uh, instances of stillbirth with women allegedly being refused medical treatment during labor, which is. Fucking yeah. disgusting. Barbaric. Again. Kind of. Um, but this is where, when I mentioned graveyards in Island Pond, this is where they say some of them came from were kids that were stillborn. Oh, okay. Because of the um, mother not being given the proper uh, the, medical care yeah, the, that the, she should have. Being a part of a birth of a child 
and knowing what my wife went through and knowing what my sister-in-laws went through and what my sisters went through and all that stuff. Fuck, man. That's some bullshit. I, I, I know there are some people out there that don't believe in going to hospitals and they use a midwife or any of that sort right. to give birth to a child. I totally understand that and accept that. But in the same breath, it's like, I saw a human come out of another human. Yeah. Like, that is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And it's one of those things where I know for a fact I am not strong enough to handle that shit. I have been hit by a car. I have been stabbed. I have had guns pointed at me. I've had all this shit happen to me in my life. I couldn't push and I couldn't maintain a human life inside of me for nine months and then still go through my day-to-day thing and it's like i know kind of what these people these women are going through is not the same as what was going on now like there's is some old world like working in the in the fields or doing this making clothes or whatever and it's like sweatshop kind of shit but from, den- and to deny them that one little thing to just ease the pain of be like, guess what, motherfucker? I have a human living inside of me, or you know, or to, or I just need to, you know, be checked on to make sure things yeah, are going deprives okay. Deprives them of a kid, you know. I mean, I don't know how it doesn't really go into like the father part of it, but you got to, you know, you know, as being a dad, that's like a, a joy for you, you know. You're you're overjoyous that you have a a new life that you. You know, that's no part My of My exact quote was, holy fucking shit, it's real now. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, as being only an uncle, I, I can only imagine. I know what being an uncle is like. We all do. Yeah. You know, we're all uncles. It, but, you know, it's just, I don't, I, I don't know. They might be robots or something, but, I mean, wouldn't you as a father want to be like, hey, fuck you assholes. I want my wife to have, you know, this care. I actually kind of with what was going on with mine. I let my wife sit, make all the decisions because like she didn't want like an epidural and all this other stuff. And then at one point she's like, "Fine, fuck it." And the whole point of like an epidural is shot goes in the spine, yeah, to relieve a lot of the pain and the pressure on the lower extremity, right? Like your hips and, and stuff. No, even on the, just the lady parts. Oh like, yeah, yeah, it, but it's, it's yeah. that area where it, it relieves the pressure. Yeah, pretty for, much yeah. from there down. And the whole thing about it is, when you get that, you're not allowed to stand up. You're mm-hmm. not allowed to be in any position because technically, there's really no feeling waist down. And I remember when my wife was working the child out, she literally was like, "I can't lay like this. This is too painful." And they're like, "Well, you have the epidural. We can't do anything." She literally grabbed a hold of the fucking bar, threw herself up on her feet, and then did the rest of the the motions. And the doctor goes, I've never seen that in my entire life of seeing somebody <laughs> who had an epidural and get up onto her feet and do this squat crouching position and actually maintain their balance. Because she's like, I don't even know. And Bree's like, I can't feel anything. Fuck it. I'm doing whatever I can to get this kid out. And I'm like, you are my fucking hero. She's a fucking badass. Dude, you have no idea. Yeah. So, but I mean, another thing is like, even if they didn't want the drugs, you're not, are they yeah. even like letting someone in there, like a nurse the, or a midwife to help them birth this fucking well, child? Well, yeah, it's probably a midwife, you know, but they probably don't, the woman probably doesn't know Jack There's probably shit, somebody that's they're... in the community that knows, okay, we can check a blood pressure, maybe. We can check temperature. Right. Or it might be someone who's delivered a baby like an older woman once and been like ah, i know what i'm doing fuck it you know she's probably just the older you know an old shaman the the medicine woman dr quinn style <laughs> not as cool oh jane seymour dude yes she, sir she's probably like the uh um alpha woman i guess yeah or what, i don't know whatever she's probably the... she, she's the hierarchy of the women she goes or or she's one of the older people in the tribe that knows what to do. She's a, yeah. gr- a grizzled vet. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, you Sorry. joke. You, you joke, but... We have to a little bit, well, man, yeah, because this is a fucking shitty topic. Yeah. But with like situations like this, yeah, there has to be with these kind of different views on how to do things. There is always this woman that also has subsidiaries that work with her. That's a big word. And that will she's like okay do this this and this okay we do got to do this you need to go here you need to do this and bam and this is the, probably her one realm that she's allowed to take control right. of mm-hmm. because 
No man wants to do this. Imagine seeing this old lady. Probably you're like, you know, late 50s, early 60s. She fucking slide her sleeves up, spit on your hands. All right, bitch, look out. <laughs> We're getting this baby out. <laughs> I don't know, man. She comes Probably. in with like fucking salad tongs or something. She's like, this is all I got. I got this and a plunger. <laughs> got him. <laughs> do you know the plunger is actually a tool? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, Jim Brewer's kid. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's Whoa. a it's a medical plunger. It's not like they just run down to the fucking janitor's closet. And like, yeah. well, for probably, them they probably would. Probably throw some, they would, throw yeah. some rubbing alcohol on it. Fuck it, it'll be all right. Ah, Rubber yeah. sterile, right? But you know, who's to say? You know, we're looking at it through you know rose colored glasses or whatever. You know, because we're blood red glasses. Yeah, because we're 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 kind of shaded on this because we don't live in that society exactly yeah you know but it's easy to cast shade when you don't know yeah. the other side of the story yep. yeah none of us have been brainwashed to that extent to do Thanks. something like that to allow your wife to go to tell your wife pretty much go no you're doing it this way mm. yeah there's she, no she comment would have, she would have fucking crushed your skull if you'd have been like nah no drugs for you she'd have just like sat dude i'm like, currently Bruh. i'm currently moving stuff out of my house and put it this way i uh, We'll leave it alone. Move yeah. on. Continue so, your story. <laughs> another documentary, which is, and it was a German documentary, uncovered uh, evidence of children that they caught on video in a local branch being beaten so terribly that the government led a raid and took the children away. In the video, uh, Wolfram... You can do it. Koenig? Oh, Wolfram Not, Koenig? Yeah, Totally. Yeah, I'm not like sure. It sounds it sounds right, right, about right. Uh, an AT, an RTL journalist filmed 50 instances of beatings on camera. That um, takes some stones. Yeah. To beat a child or beat another human being on film, be like, yeah. Oh, you're filming something. Hey, guess what? Fuck you. Now you're going to get what you deserve or, or what I feel you deserve for yeah, punishment for I, not doing what I want you to do. I almost wonder if they were filming it almost like for training. Well, they, or no, they probably filmed it so that it was kind of like a pen camera. So they didn't know. Oh, 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 oh okay. So the journalist, okay. I, I misinterpreted yeah, how you said it. Fucking CIA bullshit. Yeah. Well, so it would, I saw it would have been like how Geraldo went into that fucking mental GSG hospital. GSG9. GSG. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Well, they would have just kicked the doors in and shot these cocksuckers in the head and taken the Probably. kids out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one former member who appears in the film recounts being regularly beaten for uh, such trivial offenses as pretending to be an airplane, like you had yeah, said. Yeah, that's fucked. So oh, my is, you know, God, same thing. dude. What the fuck? They're kids. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, according to the group's teachings. It would have killed me for all the shit oh, dude, I imagined yeah. I thought I was. I, I'm pretty confident the three of us would have been in fucking holes in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, like we said, you know, according to the group's teachings, they're not permitted to engage in type of play that, uh, like, or, or fantasy, you know, because you can't act like a, uh, like something, you know, like a, a bus or an airplane or... Can't, you can't, like, pretend you know, you're driving a car. No. Can't do any of that Jesus. shit. Because Fuck that's just, these you know... people. Ugh. Um, now, for some... Now, I also saw another one that was... Um, from uh, I can't remember which source it was. It was a uh, New York, I believe it was a New York uh, TV station. They actually had a former member of the Twelve Tribes go back to said organization and uh, have a pen camera on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was she walks in and they were like. Hey, what's going on? Act like, you know, she was coming back to the group. Really? And, you know, like, oh, we missed you. And she's like, I don't know who the fuck you are, basically. You know, hadn't seen you in forever. But she walks in, and this is at, like, a little factory area where um, they're p- boxing up this uh, women's product. I don't – that's sold at Target – uh, in some other places, which I guess have since stopped, good for them selling this because it was being packaged up. And of course, the group denied it. We're like, "Well, we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that." Well, turns out that uh, they do. And while she was there, she was she actually f- filmed footage of a child being beaten um, on on video. I was like. 
holy shit. And the woman that was smacking the kid's ass was just hauling off and just wow. I was like, you motherfuckers, how could you? I, I was like, wow, how could you just sit there and not do a thing? Because if that's you're, where they're trained, you have to you have to remember if she's going in undercover. If you step in and interfere with that, it completely blows your cover. Well, not only yeah. that, she's completely out number two. Exactly. And already she's already left and then came back. So right now they're already going to be like, if she creates one, she's out of line once. Guess True. what? She's in our walls. She's behind our closed doors. True. We can we can ruin her day. Yeah. And then like you were saying, uh, Kevin, that with the recording, if they find that camera on her, she won't ever come back. Yeah. No. And but it also she's not going to be able to get that information out. So it's you feel bad. It's kind of like triage. Do you mm-hmm. save one to save many, or do you try to save many and sacrifice the one? Yeah, it's like I've been watching this show on Netflix called Deep Undercover, where these guys are watching fucking drug deals go down. They're seeing people get murdered, and they can't step in because if they do, it completely blows everything, and they're fucked too. Mm. So it's like it's one of those things where it sucks, but you kind of have to. Just take it. Well, you know? she, yeah, she saw kids that I guess she asked one of the kids, boys, um, how old he was. He was like eight years old and asked mm. a girl how old she was. I think she was like 10, 12, something like that. And then I guess they later filmed like the same boy out in the fields, you know, f- working on the on the in, in the fields. I was like, OK, well. Because they were complaining about that. I'm like, well, listen, it's working on a farm. That's not so bad, like we said. You know, it's, yeah, dude, I've done that. They're I not mean, fucking pulling a plow or something. Even if they were, you know, if they're pushing, a, having a, a horse pull a plow, you know. I mean, they were the kid was pushing a, a wheelbarrow. He fell down, you know. But it's kind of – that's the portion of it where I'm like, okay, I'm, I have no heartburn with it. You know, right. It's no big deal. But when you're – Having kids do this stuff and not – there's no compensation for pay as far as the other portion, that's kind of a r- little bit ridiculous. It's like, you know, because we all bitch about – some people bitch about uh, other countries having, you know, 12-year-olds make Nikes uh, or other products. So, no, I'm not going to lie. I would have loved to get paid when I was mowing lawns yeah, right? for my parents and for my neighborhood or whatever. But my pay was, hey, guess what? You get to live under my roof. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I was just like, wow. It, now, I have to say this. With regards to this film, um, I actually, while watching it, I happened to recognize one of the guys. That really? Was, oh. Yes, that was being interviewed. No shit. Oh, um, and the reason why I recognized him was because he actually is a in uh, Rutland. And he's there now. I guess he's the, I don't know, he's whatever. But he's there. And I was like, you son of a bitch. No you know, shit. So, basically talking open, openly and freely about what I was, about the uh, um, the punishment stick. Right. That I, was, I referred to, you know, yeah. last week. That I was like, yeah. He was basically said, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's what we do, and we beat them. You know, we we punish them for just matter whatever. of factly, like man, yeah, it's not yeah, a big deal, you yeah, know. Yeah, not a big but, deal. Like, like, but he, like he's talking about going and buying a fucking loaf of bread. Yeah, but then when confronted, uh, not him, another guy who was I, I don't know if he was the leader of the group, but he was driving a car, which I didn't know they actually drove cars because every time I've seen them, they're walking on the street. Yeah, walking. Yeah, well, to be fair, also, everything that they need is within walking distance because we have a Walmart and a grocery store. I doubt they go to the movies. Mm. I don't know. Probably not if I they're doubt not they go to Walmart. Friggin books. <laughs> Maybe they – never mind. But uh, they they interviewed one of the guys that tried to confront him. They're like, you know, do you beat kids? Do you – he's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. We're, you know, we're this, we're that. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of cover up, huh? Yeah, <laughs> assholes. Uh, so you know that I was like, I was just blown away that I even recognized the guy. Yeah, dude, that's actually I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of insane. That a lot of times when you see this stuff, it's you never expect to see the faces or no. of, of like, especially like documentaries or videos like this. You're like, oh, I'm never gonna meet these people. I'm never gonna see them, and then all of a sudden you're like. Oh yeah, I know that fucker. Yeah, now, it almost makes you wonder if if 
So you go over and get his autograph, and while he writes it, you be like, hey, guess what? I got myself a stick, too. You've been a bad boy. I've seen you on a video. Yeah, hit him with a fucking tree. <laughs> I'd rip up a tree to hit him. But it almost makes you wonder, like, did this guy transfer voluntarily? Did he fuck up there? Or do they just kind of, like, I think they rotate, just move. Him, I know? think they move him around. Like, okay. with my buddy from college, he may just be rotated. Or, from this video, there was some heat coming on him for this situation and this one location. So, like, we know of a certain religious group, if yeah. there's any heat going on in this set, We'll move location, you to a different town. They'll put you in a whole different area where people don't know you and don't yep. recognize you. Because, let's be honest, not many people are going to be hunting for this video to go look at it. No. They're going to be like, oh, this is a new guy. Yeah, we just rotate people around so everybody can see all the surrounding area. Because we have groups everywhere. We want them to see the entire U.S. The funky thing about, or this, wherever. about this group is they have a Facebook page. Really? Yeah, they also have a website, okay? Oh and God. they will they must scan things. And because... here I thought they would be like me and not have a book of many faces. Yeah. Oh, should it be a dick and upload these two episodes to their Facebook page? No. <laughs> okay. I would do it under a different alias, don't do you or the show. But uh they don't do it when, with fans. When people kind of like talk shit about them like that this for instance when I said the uh the Germany mm-hmm. report, uh, the Island Pond report, all of them, they actually went through and they were discrediting things, basically saying, oh, we don't do that, we don't do this. They, yeah, they're covering their they ass. They even went as far as, I, saw, I looked at the webpage, they went as far as talking about how uh, with, with uh, black people, with African Americans, with uh, how... You know they're they're lesser. They should be slaves and everything. They have a guy who is a leader of one of these organizations who is African American. Okay, his son is a part of this, and the son is does a video, pretty much says that, well, I've I've grown up into this. I don't you know, I've been treated fine. Nobody does anything to me or does says anything. I'm like, what? Really, you're that brainwashed that you don't believe no or they just admitted that either stuff? either he's brainwashed or over the years maybe the group has evolved a little bit to go maybe we should step away from this bullshit and accept everybody into it but I'm not, I'm not defending these fucking guys at all or devil's advocate here and i hate to use this is really makes me feel terrible to say this or they earn their keep and be like you know what they're fine now we've yeah. we've inst- for lack of a better term, we've institutionalized them enough so now they're not pets, quote unquote pets. They're actually one of us because now they are like us. Like I, that's the only thing I came up with. It just if oh, I don't know if more it, maybe it's because he has a the the guy's father has a uh, white um, wife. Uh, that could be. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm, Again, I'm, we I'm don't know. Balling. We don't know their side of the story, and that's yeah. one of those things where that. We won't know because, in all honesty, I don't want to join them. Fuck that, man. No. I enjoy my shit. No. So now let's move Holy on. Holy fuck. To, yeah. um, the the this, very first post on their Facebook page is th- why this is, blacks deserve to be slaves. Explained. Yeah, this is from the 12 Tribes Cult and Testimonies of X members Facebook page. Are we sure that this is legit, though? Because anybody can make a Facebook page uh, about this. Yeah. And just say whatever they're going to say to discredit them. Well, Again, I, I'm just doing devil's advocate so that way we have both sides. However, I'm telling you, look up the 12 tribes. Look it up. Look at their Facebook page. Not, not their Facebook, but their actual uh, web page. And you will see the shit that I'm talking about. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's, so, let's, let's get off of this. Let's go to some accounts from individuals who had encounters with the 12 tribe folks. These are people who were uh, originally in the cult that got out or people like this, us that are outsiders one, looking in? This is an uh, outsider looking in. Okay, cool. This happens to be one that's uh, – she's a hiker. Okay. Okay. So th- this first one I found on a website uh, called Trek, which is for people who hike. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it lets you know where uh, – like we were talking about the hostels, where places you yeah. can stay, where there's food, yep. um, certain locations that if you are on the long trail or like around here, the Appalachian Trail – you can go there, and they will give you rides, uh, bring you to food, where laundry services are. Yep. Yeah, I've been on there for when I used to hike. And yeah, I think they do like trail ratings and stuff. Like yeah, they let you know what's safe and what's not. Yeah. What uh yeah. has uh 
lean-tos or places like that so you can stay inside of a kind of a enclosed building comparative to just having a uh, a fire pit. Hold on. You all right? <laughs> you getting He's getting, getting heated. fucking hot under the collar, bud. Dude, I get it, man. Uh, yeah. It's just yeah. Getting a little warm in here. Dude, after looking at that that fucking post, I was like, I didn't even look read it, but I was like it's just weird that that's what we're talking about and that's the first fucking post yeah. on that Facebook page. That's <laughs> fucked, man. So, okay. So back to it. Yes. The first one I found was from a website called Trek. Mm-hmm. Like you said, uh, it was uh, the whole... It just has everything if you're hiking through a yeah. specific area. It lets you know any of the amenities or things you're looking for, how far they are, where they are, and like what uh, Kevin C. was saying with the ratings of like the trails and then like campsites. Yep. I've used I've been on there multiple times for when I hike. Yeah, I never knew it existed until I was like, holy shit, that would have been nice to you know see that when I was uh, doing the long trail. I was like, oh, that would be sweet. But uh, so this story is about a woman who was aqua blazing, which is, that as she put it, getting high hikers, on the water. No, it's what hikers call. It'd be good though. All right. Dude, I'll do it. <laughs> was was she burning things with water? No. Okay. Uh, it's what uh, hikers call people who don't follow the white markers for the Appalachian Trail. Instead, they go via the waterway. Um. And so she was paddling 150 miles on the Shenandoah River, which parallels the Shenandoah Mountain section of the AT, which is the Appalachian Trail. Uh, She got off the waterway and needed to get to Harper's Ferry so that she could take the train from uh, D.C. to New York, where Mm -hmm. she planned to take get on to the AT. Once again, that's the Appalachian Trail. Yep. Right. The cuts um, from the south all the way up to Maine. Yeah. From Georgia to... Uh, Canada, uh, I believe, right? Uh, what is it? Is uh, it Acadia? Ca- Acadia, no. In Maine? Cadedon? Cadedon. Oh, Katahdin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Katahdin. Um, I Lobsters. Only, I only know that because potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do have potatoes up there. It's a uh, it's a specific strain of potatoes in there. Actually, really good for uh, baked potatoes because they're fucking huge. No, oh, nice. Yep. Not so, good for much else, though. <laughs> There's your random potato fact for the show. There we go. <laughs> so she planned to hike uh, the section from New York up to I don't I don't know where. She didn't really say. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna let her actually tell the rest of the story, and this is her account. She she starts it off with, I had only sixty dollars left in my bank account, so I searched my guide for a guidebook for a cheap place to stay. Stony Brook, a nearby organic farm, offered quote work for stay i called them and was thrilled when they said they'd pick me up feed me house me for the night and drive me to harper's ferry for the next day all for free even if Mm. i didn't have time to actually work within an hour an older woman in a homespun in i'm sorry in homespun clothes picked me up in her station wagon Stony Brook, she said, was not an organic farm, but a religious commune called 12 Tribes of Israel Community. Dang, she says. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I would have been like, yep, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to be a statistic now. She said, dang, I've been baited, baited and switched. Yeah, pretty fucking much, dude. She got catfish, but in the religious way. Oh, uh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Monkfished. <Ooh. laughs> wow. I guess you can eat that. Yeah, good. dude, monkfish is act pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, can, carry on. She goes on to say, during an, um, an Appalachian Trail section hike in Vermont the previous year, I'd first heard of the 12 tribes community who also had have a farm in the trail in Rutland, which I didn't. I don't think they do. I don't think they have a farm. I mean, they do they have don't. a main farm that supplies the local restaurant. Huh. Um, they have some stuff that they grow on the roof of the building that they're living in and staying in. No shit. But the main actual heart of the actual group is off site, like just outside of Rutland. I think it's closer towards Killington or hmm. Menden. Hmm. I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. I could be wrong or maybe closer towards uh, like uh, Cuttingsville. I know they, they're they definitely there. They, they specifically put themselves in a place where they can be wooded and do their whatever stuff out in the yeah, woods and be secluded from everybody. Yeah, isolate so then, themselves. Exactly. And also so they can do certain things that won't get them in trouble with uh, uh, Rutland Town or Rutland City ordinances. Yep. I like fires and parties or whatever they do. Yeah. But, yeah. Huh. Cool. 
Well, she goes on to say that hikers, including some who'd volunteered and stayed on the farm, told me various stories about the commune. One hiker Run. said, <laughs> <laughs> one hiker said they enforced a ten o'clock bedtime, but only for guests who were are women. Another repeated a rumor about a young through hiker who got stuck, uh, sucked into the tri- twelve tribes and was trapped baking bread in their basement until his parents came to rescue his rescue. Other hikers said they were, they were harmless, which I get, I kind of got that you know when I was looking through stuff, people said that they were basically harmless. You know, right? I mean that's that's what it said on track. They they loved their stay with them. It was great. I was like, yeah, I know okay. people that have stayed in the hostel in Rutland City, and again, this is how I was basing mine because I used to work for a rental car company, and I would pick up somebody on coming off of the trail one mm-hmm. spot, and like, can you bring me to? the local uh, hostel and then I'm going to drop off my stuff and I'm going to get a car from you and then I'm going to do my my running around. I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. And it's like, I, that's how I came again, how I knew him because they knew me as a business person. And also if you didn't know, if I wore their dress up, you think I could blend right in with these motherfuckers. And they said they never had problems because every time they hike through here, they're like, yeah, I just stay here. But again, it's I think they pick and choose to see who it is. If someone kind of matches their views or whatever, yeah. they're fine. But if you're like a single person by yourself or whatever it is, then things get a little hairy there, especially if you're a single female by yourself. Yeah, it's pretty much all bets are off. Like the hostel and Rutland is fine, but literally at a certain time, the doors close down and you're, sorry, you're out for the night. Oh, they have a lock on it. I, yeah. I, it's got to be kind of like, uh, what's that guy? Uh, John Edwards, that fucking... Uh, TV psychic mm-hmm. where you can kind of cold read people and you go, you can kind of like get like talk to somebody for a couple of seconds and go, gotcha. Well, yeah. yeah like know? for instance, you can tell with us, my personality is very upfront and abrasive and loud and boisterous. They're going to leave me alone. Right. They're going to be like, yep, we're going to leave this guy alone because we know in 12 hours he's gone where another Joe Schmo that comes in is very quiet and timid. We got this guy because he's not going to fight anything. He's not going to do whatever. Or someone like me, you know, I'm going to go bat shit fucking crazy and bash my head off the wall just to prove a point. Or somebody like me who'd go, oh, okay, yeah, and just sit there and talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, you turn around and go, these people are fucking crazy. Yeah, the we'll- bitch, <laughs> bitch, you'd be making their bread in their basements <laughs> no, for an I hour and a half. Oh, I fucking would not. <laughs> you, I bet you would. Hey, you know what? I'd tell him, listen, any bread I fucking bake, I take. So, <laughs> or just stick your tongue in it. Put my wiener in their bread. <laughs> With that said, <laughs> how else do you need it? Right? Need a rolling pin, dude. Just roll. Just put your thing on it and just roll back and forth. Uh-huh. I need more flour. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't gonna get a surprise. <laughs> this was an eclair, if you get what I mean. Hey, oh, whoa! Uh, Left some dental floss in it for you too. <laughs> Self flossing bread. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so anyway, she, moving on. Yes. Chuck a fuckery. <laughs> she goes on to say, I, I remember buying an energy bar from the 12 tribes a tent at the Trail Days Festival in Damascus, Virginia. She says, regardless, I was surprised by my guide. Surprised my guidebook did not mention the Stony Brook Farm was a religious organization. Appalachian Trail resources I encountered usually mention if a service is provided by a religious institution, even most trail magic, random acts of go- uh, kindness from strangers on the trail, I found uh, would acknowledge sponsorship by a church or a religious organization. Whatever the truth about Stony Brook Farm, I felt tricked and was worried about staying at a religious commun- commune. I would have much preferred a secular hostel with a microwave and a solid collection of VHSs. But oh, girl, after are- my own heart. <laughs> But we are already on our way. Arriving at Stony Brook Farm, I felt like I was entering a, a an American doll, American girl doll historical chapter book. Oh. That's that because is. of the clothing yeah. and the old timey uh, feel of everything. Okay, dude, American dolls; those things are stupid expensive and they're fragile. You can stay here, but y'all need to churn some butter first. <laughs> Essentially, it's it's an old world take on like dolls. People yeah. who fucking go ham crazy over there collecting those things. It's fucking expensive too. Yeah, people in you loose, no idea. <laughs> people in loose homespun clothing, uh, moseyed around the farm's compound, finishing up their evening chores. Upon the up uh, up the hill from the main house, people were constructing small huts. 
these would be these would be bunk houses to host even more Appalachian Trail hikers," said my driver, who was also the farm's school teacher. Most of the young women I saw were holding babies. People greeted me and made uh, made intense eye contact. Every conversation ended with, "How long are you staying with us?" <laughs> and I wish you could stay with us longer. I thought of, of the expression, don't drink the Kool-Aid, but Stony Brook Farms Nectar was the mate. A, ca- a caffeinated her- herbal drink, or some would say herbal, <laughs> often pronounced mate. Mate. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. It's a type of tea. It's actually pretty good. Okay. The community had already eaten dinner, but some of them took me to their dining room and served me fruit, a bowl of gruel, and a steaming cup of meat. Ugh. Wait. Uh, 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 gruel, mm. you say? That's like Ugh. cream of wheat, but worse. Yeah, it's like... Uh, yeah. Ugh. While I ate, the school teacher sat beside me and spoke with a distur- distressed young woman wearing jeans and holding a cell phone. An outsider, I thought. They talked ab- about her plans to quit her job that weekend and join the community. After I ate... The teacher showed me around the farm, then took me to her bedroom and yeah. offered me a twin size bed parallel to her own. No, thank you. I was like, <laughs> offered me, brought me to her room. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Don't drink the mate. <laughs> she let me, lent me a pair of homespun balloon pants to wear while I did my laundry, then sorted my backpack and she graded geography tests. One kid, she said, had answered that Ohio was a country and another wrote that Spain was a continent. Maybe she should have should review geography. Mostly we just teach proverbs. I thought um, she was going to say everyone thought Ohio was a uh, ancient way of saying hello. Ohio. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ohio might as well be its own country. They got some wild shit going on there. I ain't picking a fight with them. I'm not either, but it is it is definitely like the Midwest Florida. I've I've read some things. There's a lot of people we know from Ohio. I know, and they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio's fucked. Well but, <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe they you know, she's right. That maybe the the teacher's right. Maybe they should have taught some geography instead of a whole bunch of proverbs. Um she goes and say the children study for a half a day, she explained, then do farm work, which you know, okay, that's an old old school right. way of thinking. Yeah. Don't the um, Amish do something like that? Any Amish <laughs> listeners, let us know. Hmm. Well, they might. Never know. <sighs> Moment of silence for our Amish, Amish listeners. Okay, anyway. Actually, they have to go to school. They actually do. Yeah, yeah they're they they actually really show. stupid smart, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, she goes on to say, after mu- a much-needed bath, it was bedtime. I asked the teacher if they had a book I could read. My copy of uh, Krakauer's intro... Uh, crack hours into the thin air got <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay got destroyed during the aqua blaze ah <laughs> nice Kev- as Kevin holds up the book <laughs> that's funny he also wrote um <laughs> what a nerd Right? I was like, how uh, the no, fuck has that even happened? Yeah. No, dude, he, he's the Usually guy that, I'm the one that has connections to all these weird fucking stories. He wrote that, uh, he wrote uh, Into the Wild, the story about oh. that guy that went fucking up into Alaska in the bus. Uh huh. Same thing, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> I just got really excited about that. Well, that book got, uh, as she says, got got destroyed while she was aqua blazing. Um, the teacher goes on to say, we have the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's been edited. It's literally just a cover and the back cover. It's been, so she it's been redacted. <laughs> she because she's looking for a book and she says we have the book. Yeah. Well, you just gotta give were, us your soul and your underwear. Uh, <gasps> the girl goes on to, to say there were no novels, magazines, or non twelve tri- non twelve tribes literature on the farm. Oh, that's right. Because they don't even do the re- like the regular straight up Bible, do they? Nope. That's they have, right. Remember that dude wrote From, his own yeah. manifesto of douchery. So I nestled into my bed, parallel to the teacher's uh, matching bed, and read a propaganda pamphlet. <laughs> it said that members must disconnect from their friends and families outside of the community, renounce their worldly possessions, and provide services in the community's organic delis and markets for free. I text messaged several friends and my older sister, saying, quote, 
Staying with a cult for the night. Hope I don't get stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. They took they took her fucking book, but they're like, nah, you can keep your phone. Well. We got yeah. Wi-Fi, bitch. You'll be all right. Yeah. I, I kind of <laughs> want to uh, like find this woman and be like, I love you. <laughs> the teacher woke uh, me up around 5 a.m. to get dressed and attend their religious circle. First, she, she brought me to the main house. Families follow, flowed into the kitchen and gathered around a pot of brewing mate. Even the children ladled mate into their cups for their morning fix. Next, we sat in an outdoor it's, it's tent Monty. area. It's Mati. Oh, sorry. Well, it looks like mate. I know. Uh, it's M-A-T-T-E. Mati. Sorry. Yeah. You silly bitch. <laughs> Crazy juice. <laughs> no, dude. It's a type of tea. It's an herbal tea. <laughs> ah, well, next, we sat in an outdoor tent, our chairs in a circle, and the ceremony began around 6 a.m. A young man with a full b- blonde beard started playing a guitar. He looked like he could have been a member of the band Fleet Foxes. Who the hell they I was actually like, like Fleetwood Mac? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Fleet Foxes? That sounds like some dirty old man porn. Motherfucker looked like Stevie Nicks. <laughs> R.I.P. They sang songs about She's Yash. Dead? I don't know. I don't think she Her is. Her career is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they sang songs Stevie about... Stevie Nicks, text me. <laughs> They sang songs about Yahshua, a pre-pseudo Hebrew word for Jesus. I felt rude sitting and drinking my mate. Well, it's almost like, it's like latte, but mate. It, is. <laughs> it has a little like, accent. Uh, it has the accent a goo, whatever, or the yeah. e. While the community stood with their hands in the air. So I put down my mug and started waving my arms, too. After more Yahshua songs, an elderly woman shared her conversa- uh, conversion story. She said she was in a financial in financial ruins before she joined the twelve tribes. Next, an older man gave. A I joined speech. this, so my family yeah. got all my debt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was in financial ruins before I joined. Now I don't make any fucking money, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Bite my dick. Ugh. Next, an older man gave a speech saying that the culture move cultural movements of the 1960s were all failures. Therefore, people should join the 12 tribes community. He stressed the importance of authority to the 12 tribes. Children must be spanked if they disobey. Women must listen to their husbands and authority figures. He mentioned George Orwell's 1984 and said that the people in the house, in the news, use double speak" in quotes, like the book. Question for you. Do you think this guy... Join this after his family, either his wife left him or she's a part of it, and their kids are all raised. Or do you uh, think like he raised his family through this whole process? Through it. Or do you think he doesn't have kids and he just believes this? Mm, well, I, I don't know because he may. I have, feel like some, sometimes, sometimes he may have had to had to have read 1984. Well, so I don't know. For me personally, I feel like sometimes when I hear people that say this shit, they don't have kids. They just say it. Well, they have to have kids pretty much to be. They that's like well, the some people key don't things. have the genetic code that makes them allowed to have babies. Uh, and know. then there are those people that shouldn't have the genetic code to make babies, and they are rabbits. I know one. I of don't them. know, man. One. I don't. <laughs> They're directly connected to my family. Oh, I know. What you, I, know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, continue well, on, sir. So he used the term "double speak," like in the book. Actually, he was combining the. Orwell's terms new speak and double think. Yeah, because, you know, new so speak. Don't, so he didn't read don't the book speak twice long. and don't think yeah. twice. Yep. So that's like, don't even bother measuring, just cut it. Cut twice, measure zero times. Yeah, dude. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> fuck it, make it work. Yeah, we got more wood, fuck it. Yeah, right. yeah, and then beat your kid because, you know, you fucked up, but their fault. Beat your kid with the wood that you miscut. Get two birds stoned at once. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck this. Th- yeah. oh. she, I'm trying to stay calm and make dumb jokes. I'm sorry. It's just. She, she says, I wondered if the ni- if 1984's anti-authority, anti-censorship themes made an impression on him. Then he directed his speech at me. Oh, God. Hikers and canoers are just like us. We're both looking for something. We are searchers. Do you both like water? Yeah. She says, we both I, like water. I drink water. You like to canoe in water? She says, I gulped down the rest of my mate. The circle concluded, and it was breakfast time. Though Stony Brook Farm serves gourmet treats and 
artisanal bread in their organic delis, the people on the farm seemed mostly to eat gruel. The women at my table said, again, they wished that I could stay longer. They asked what I was going to do later that day. I've, I'd plan a I've been planning to stop at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in D.C. as I'd long to see their dinosaur exhibit. Well, when Since, you're done there, come back. We're having grass soup for yeah. lunch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to meet somebody that actually bathes regularly and doesn't have hairy armpits. Well, she, she says, I wasn't sure, how, wasn't sure, so I avoided the subject. After breakfast, I used the restroom. When I came out, the teacher was praying discreetly beside the door. Annoyed as she at her clingingness, I thought I'd branch out and make other, she says, quotes, cult friends. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, get off my ass and leave me alone. I know. Uh, Praying I, uh, for me. I'm just going number two. And I don't need I, prayer. I, honestly, and toilet I, paper. I kind of <laughs> know what she's. Re- I know how she feels right now. I, I I will I will talk about it probably a little bit later. But I know what she feels like. Okay, I don't pray all the time when you go to the bathroom. I'm just curious and want to make sure when the noises I hear that you're doing okay. And well, oh. when we do, it's just for your own safety. Yeah, dude. I, uh, you, imagine walking, I out of there, walking out of there and going, "Excuse me, professor, would you kindly fuck off and let me poop?" <laughs> she goes on to say, "I offered to help a mother." With her morning chores. While she folded laundry, I babysat her toddler and her four-year-old daughter. What is life like for women on the farm, she, I asked. Most women, most girls think about getting married throughout their childhood, she said, and usually marry between 17 and 19 years old. She joined the Troll Tribes community in her late 20s and was paired up with another man who had also recently joined. While she changed the bed sheets, she mentioned... She didn't like having to do all the housework for her husband and family. Okay, that turned paired up. That's, Dude, that's totally fun. arranged. It's totally yeah, arranged. That's yeah. weird. I don't like that at all. Afterward, the mother brought her children and me to the bakery where the next chores would begin. The guitarist from the morning circle was kneading dough. He smiled and asked, Where are you from? Detroit. She replied, Upstate New York. Uh, would this be my cult husband if I stayed here? She wondered. Ooh. I was 24 and half then, probably an old man made by tw- uh, 12 tribe standards, but still within breeding age. I could wed this That's beautiful. That's fucked. <laughs> I could wed this beautiful brainwashed hipster, procreate, <laughs> and make artisanal bread. For the rest of my life. So I know, I'm actually like loving this woman. I want to like give her a hug and be like, "Will you be my friend?" She says, "No, wait, 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 no." I snapped out of my delusion. I have uh, ambitions. I want to want to see the dinosaur exhibit. I want to hike the Appalachian Trail. One section. I want to see time. things that exist that I, these motherfuckers I, say didn't exist. I can't join your cult because I haven't seen the dinosaurs yet. Yeah. No, how do you say it? <laughs> Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, There's a reference if anybody gets it. Let us know. Uh, she then, the little girl that was with her to- says, said to her, we have lots of mice here. No That's shit. Little, little girl say. And they're in the meat pies. <laughs> the, her mother sa- speaks up and says, you're not supposed to tell her, Cindy. The- and as she carried a bowl of raisins to their bread, and she says, "It's okay. I have mice in my house too." And, and, and as she drew, as the girl drew a picture of a superhero to uh, to color. Wait, wait. Do you realize she drew, she drew the superhero for the girl? But you know, she didn't really didn't probably realize that. Hey, you're not supposed to do that. No, my thing about it is she brought up the point that they they have mice there, mm-hmm. and then carried. "Quote unquote raisins, raisins." I know to put in the bread. Yeah, uh, don't eat the raisin bread, folks. It's got it's got chocolate chips in it. That's not chocolate chips, kid. That's <laughs> well, it was finally time for her to leave. Good to go to Harper's Ferry and catch the train to D.C. She says, "I thank the community for their free meals, bed, laundry, shelter, and I got in an exchange for little work. I make uh, a man whom I hadn't met before gave me a ride out of the community." He spoke about his son's career and sounded proud of him, though they were no longer in contact as his son was not a member of the 12 tribes community. In Harper's Ferry, we did a loop around the town and stopped beside every person wearing a backpack to ask 
if they wanted to stay on the organic organic qu- farm in quotes oh that's so fucking weird it feels uh, dirty yeah it's like you're tr- that's like some serial killer shit where they're fucking like looking for people you know and he go he goes oh. cults work man now, we've talked he, about it it gets weirder because he says as he, he talks to them he says it's a great place just ask her I'm a seasoned hitchhiker and I believe it's the best not to it's best not to disagree with your drivers Hey, hey, yeah. I got a question for you, uh, lady. Um, what's that little bandage on your forehead for? I bumped it. <laughs> she she replies, you know, when when you know after he he makes this comment, she says, "Yep." But she tries to communicate with her eyes. Beware, it's a cult. <laughs> so with that said, let's take a little break, and then we'll come back to get. M- some more stories. Oh my god. Yeah. Mm. The Dark Windows podcast is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription video on-demand service with thousands of in-depth videos taught by some of the world's greatest professors. You'll always have something fascinating to learn about on there. With categories ranging from history to travel and everything in between, there's something for everyone. The courses I'm personally looking forward to the most are the 36-part series on the Vikings and a 24-part series called The Agency, A History of the CIA. If you go over to ageofradio.org forward slash darkwindows, there's an offer to get The Great Courses Plus free for 14 days. Stay ahead in life. Start your access today with 11,000 plus video and audio lectures on a variety of topics. Now, let's get back to the show. He lied. All right. We're back. Hope yeah. you uh, hope you like that commercial. Yeah. Uh, look at check that stuff out. It's uh, uh pretty great. cool. I plan on checking it out myself. I haven't yet, but I do plan on checking it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm definitely looking into Great Courses yeah. Plus because it's uh, pretty freaking cool. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. But you know what? I don't really want to check out anymore. I'm so tired of talking about these cult. fuckers. But we're almost there. We're Thank almost God. there. Hang in a little bit longer, <laughs> folks. So. I have two more little stories to tell, and I'm probably going to tell my story at the end. Um, so here's a taste of what it's like to growing up inside of a cult, of this cult. Um, this guy named Chaim Matthias. Chaim Matthias. I don't know. What's I'm going with? Chaim Mathi- uh, Matthias said he was beaten between 20 to 30 times a day. He said, quote, I grew to be numb to it, to quell the rage within and just not feel anything. What I cared about was when my infant sister was beaten and there was nothing I could do about it. To hear her screams and to be powerless. Yeah. And that even if you try to stop, you couldn't, is a crushing thing to go through. It broke my spirit, man. I still remember her screams to this day. Now, I have to stop right there and say this right there it hits a little close to home for me, and it draws a lot of inner fucking rage out. Yeah. Where, As it should. Where I would – that would just set me the fuck off. Yeah. You know, I mean yeah, – I'm Honestly, uh, I'm surprised that you have not found a story of a former member going back and beating the shit out of somebody. Or yeah. worse, you Dude, know? Well, the thing is, well, stuff like that, there is a little hint of Stockholm Syndrome where you get out of this and then you go there and you have, like, you get out and you have all these, you know, ill, like, intentions that you want to unleash harm, you want to free everybody, you want to free this, and you get there and then you get scared because your brain has been pre, you know, has been brainwashed or whatever, reformed into thinking that when you get walk through these doors, you walk across this line. Yeah, Your brain just naturally has to fight over that that writing that's in there, that programming, for the new stuff to take mm-hmm. over, and it's just, it's difficult. That's fair enough. That's yeah. the reason why you see uh, people who are in abusive relationships, and I know you're probably going to allude to this in a little bit, but like you get to a certain point, and it's like you want to run away, but yet you don't. 
or when the cops come, you see it in like if you watch a show Cops, for instance, there's always this um, one individual, like generally it's a female who is a victim of abuse. And then as it's going on, she doesn't want to press charges, even though she is literally bloodied from right. top to bottom, beat up, black and blue. So many different like levels of abuse she's been through. And then you get to the point of where she uh, she's like, I don't want to press charges. I don't want to press charges. I don't want to press charges. That's why a lot of times it's like I think our state and I know a handful of others does not matter if you want to press charges. The state can take over. Right. And be like, doesn't matter. There's abuse here. There was violence here. We're taking them. For at least to sleep it off for the night, whether you want to press charges or not, does not matter. This is what's going to happen, whether yeah. you want it to or not. Yeah, Florida's like that. Yeah, and that's where I think with this, where you get somebody who's like, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to free my family. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take care of this. And you walk over there, and then all of a sudden, all your bravado is gone because now you're like, you start probably having panic attacks because now you're back in this negative situation that you fought so hard to get yourself out of. That's a good point. So, I, I, I didn't even think about it like that. What? Well, yeah, I mean, but like I, 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 it's, I had to stop right there. Yeah, dude. Pretty much with like that portion. Um, I did find another story, a little story so that haunting. shows how women are treated in this group. This story was about a girl that was, well, when she was fourteen, um, kissed a boy. Okay, that was around the same age as her. Yeah, as, as they do. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. This kiss was innocent, she said, but. They were separated, meaning that they were sent to different states and could not communicate. The fuck? Now, <laughs> it's not like it's going to be some Romeo and Juliet bullshit. It's just probably like a harmless well, little peck. Yeah. yeah. Well, mind you, they were supposed to be a mate, a couple. Oh. They were supposed to be, you know, a couple that was supposed to reproduce and all this good stuff. Because they, oh, were, there's, they were, you know, they were, they were arranged marriage yeah. right off the bat. So fucking gross. Well,. When they were 18, however, they were brought back together and they were married. <laughs> she claimed that she was uh, she ran away when she was married and was gone for three months. The group somehow got in contact with her and began to pressure her into returning to the group. Mm. They went as far as saying that if she did not come back, her husband would burn in hell for an eternity if she did not come. Yeah, you know, when did she didn't come back? There's that reason why a lot of people won't come back and fight. They'll just come back and be submissive. So They have to because they put that fear of, yeah, you may get away. That's fine. But guess who else is still, still here? We still got your family. We got yeah. everybody else still here. So she returns. Such a shitty fucking thing to do to somebody. Fuck, dude. Instead of just being like, all right, fine, go do your own thing and just live your life. Kind of like, I believe the Amish is like that, where if like, okay, you leave, that's fine. You're excommunicated. Don't come back to us. Don't, whatever. We'll give you one chance. You don't come back. That's fine. Have fun living your life. When you come back here, we're not going to talk to you. Or if you want us to be back where you are, you're going to have to prove your worth. But ultimately, it's, you're gone. Do your own thing. We're not going to pressure you to come back. Where with this, this is such a low, vile, disgusting thing to do. To, like, threaten someone's family. Yeah. And even if she wasn't married, you know they would take it on if she had any siblings. Mm. Or if her parents were of elderly age. That's some fucking low bullshit to do. Well, Jonestown did something really similar where, like, if you if you and your wife had a child while you were part of the group, you could leave. Child had to stay because they were technically, like, church property. Yeah. That's, that's fucking disgusting. Stupid. I... Ugh. And this is why, like, I sent you guys a text. I'm like, yeah, fuck them. I'm done. Yeah. So she... I know, no. She, like, I saw it. So she returned to the couple, returned to the group, and the couple was relo- relocated to Florida so that the family that she had stayed with when she left the group could not find her. She also stated that after three months of marriage, the group uh, reprimanded the couple because they had not become pregnant yet. And, well, since this, she has left the group. Good for her. Good. Now. Any word on her husband or? Uh, no. I don't, I don't it's know. It's probably one of those things you're just going to have to deal with it and let's move on. Yeah. So, now, I got to tell my little bit of a story because, like I have said, I have worked, gone to one of these facilities, the Yellow Deli, and I have witnessed these people firsthand um, and kind of seen some of these things that we've talked about like for example when we were discussing how uh this girl that was when she went to stay at the the farm and was pretty much 
kind of uh, stalked by the older woman. Yeah. Well, I had the same kind of feeling this last time I was there because I had two men follow me around. One left and the other one kind of stayed there the whole time. Did not let me out of his sight pretty much at all. And then then it was finally like when I was getting ready to be done there that um, I said, okay, to the other guy I'm with, you go with him and I'm going to go you know, to other areas. And he kind of like got the hint that don't mess with this motherfucker kind of because he, he's serious about shit. And I, even though I kind of, I guess I was more like a person that could get him shut down. <laughs> right. You know, so and I mean, they in, all, in all fairness, that's why that might be part of the reason you had somebody following you. Because I, I used to, for pest control, I'd go to areas like that where you'd have somebody with you just to keep track of where you are in the facility in case you get yeah, hurt. Or none of that, that, they don't want you to steal anything, I, too. Exactly, that, too. But these people are just seeming But the thing fucking... is, oh, I've been there several times. Right. And, I, you know, I, there was times where I had never, like, with the pre, okay, th- th- this is why I say this. The previous guy that was in charge never did this once. I did fire extinguishers there, okay, and then I do the fire alarm. For fire extinguishers there, never once did he follow me around. This other guy. Which you're never, going through every build, every part of the building. Yep. You have to go from top to bottom. Because when I did it for a short time, too, you literally have to go around and part of state requirement mm-hmm. and state law, you have to check every single yep. outlet, every single spot. Because if not, then it's your ass on yeah, the line. If you right. didn't check at, like that one on the top floor in the fucking scary ass attic that you have to crawl in a mm-hmm. pile of shit. The fire alarm did the same, you know, the same thing. Go everywhere. Well... The previous guy never did this. That could be why he's no longer there. Could be. This yeah, new probably guy, got laxed. This new guy, like I mentioned, that I saw. Up your ass. And I have to say, I was very like, you. I, I wanted to say something, but guess what? I didn't say a word. You're a professional. Cause professional. Because you know if you said one thing, mm-hmm. he would report back to your boss and you would be shit canned. Exactly. Because yeah. he would be that would metaphorical be that and physical thorn in your ass. So, yeah, he follow, but this guy followed me around, you know, everywhere. And was like trying to act like such the tough guy. I was like, dude. "Tuck your chain, motherfucker! Get out of here!" <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, "Dude, you're, you you're... leave your chain hanging, there'll be fists a flying, motherfucker." <laughs> so I will earn this fucking paycheck so you and keep this fire. Like this, you'll be following me around here, holding my pocket. Yeah. yeah. So he, so he does this. Okay, this other guy that was there was a creepy fuck. Like, wait, so oh. only one of them was creepy? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he was like all kind of like laughy, defensey, kind of like uh, sometimes you, you get. Oh yeah, Kevin, yeah. you get. A little, it's a defense mechanism. Yeah. You get like well, nervous he, or scared. You laugh a little bit. Yeah, he he kind of was like laughy defense. You yeah, know? you do that weird laugh thing. <laughs> the, the other little part of it was when I kind of got the feeling of you know, so of how they, uh, another instance of how uh, I got how they treat women was. I had come from, I don't know if it was upstairs or downstairs, whichever it was, went into where they kind of have this little like bar area. One of the girls that was there, it was two, uh, she was behind the bar and she asked me, she goes, she's like, oh, hey. She's like, do you want a drink? And offered me, offer me something. I don't know what it was. Monte. And I said, uh, no, no, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Well, I see her nonchalantly. Like, not not so not shalomly, but she like kind of <laughs> looks over, and looking at the two other people, the guys behind me, and she like kind of like looks back, like almost as to say, you know, like oh okay, so I gotta ask for something else because they um, they just told me to ask for something else, you know. So she goes, uh, do you wanna do you want a soda? I go, no, no, that's okay, and I don't need that. And I'm like, what the fuck, you know? So you guys are just behind me. Trying to pressure her, yeah. She she was into getting, into getting you know more stuff. So you're trying to sexuality, con- man. She, Using that sexuality well, to get the hooks in you. Not only that, if they get you to take something, they could either get you in trouble for that because we're like, well, he just took a drink, and then it's multiple against one, or it's another way to kind of get you on their side. Yeah, she she got her fucking her pitch from the dugout and was trying to convey back to you. Well, <laughs> guess what? It was wrong. 
Yeah. She she was supposed to throw a curveball. Well, they, they, she, they wanted her to bring the heat. She threw a curveball. She, <laughs> she, she threw a slider, and I knocked it out of the park. But anyway. So, Can we stop talking about football, please? <laughs> I was actually I talking fucking, about, I fucking hate tennis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so terrible. I was going to say tennis. <laughs> you guys are Kevins. You guys. Never mind. Anyway. So uh, the last thing so, was like one of the first few things. I We had a ladder, and I said, uh, I, I set it down just beside the, the bar, and I was talking with the two guys because they had a, a device that was blocked. I said, hey, you got to move this and talk about wiring and all this good stuff. Well, the girl grabs a, the same girl that had offered me a, so, a soft drink, but before she did this, Better she – Better than a she, hard drink. Yeah. She uh, – A whiskey she grabs, drink? A vodka drink. <laughs> a whiskey drink? A lager drink and a cider drink. <laughs> she takes the ladder – and she brings it over. She's trying to, I don't know, do something with a sign or whatever. Well, she sets it up, and then I notice that she's walk, getting the going to step up on the ladder with bare feet. I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, hey, well, just um, be careful, please, because uh, that's my ladder, and I don't want you to fall and get hurt because uh, I don't want to have anything happen. Well, the guy that's the leader, in quotes, looks over, and he gives, like, this look of, like, your ass is in so much trouble right now. To you or to her? To her. And it like has this like serious look of like, uh, you need to get down right out now and get on a ladder. And like it was like stern, like basically, you're gonna get a talking to later on when I leave. And I was like, whoa, whoa. I was like diffusing. I was like, hey, it's no problem. She can use the ladder. No, she's gonna she no, no, we don't want her to use that. We don't want her to use I'm like, whoa, motherfucker. I got another question for I'm you. I'm like, hold on a second. The barefoot thing, no offense. I do a lot of stuff bare, like bare feet. I'm currently not wearing shoes, and I don't wear shoes. Before you guys came over to help me move, I was literally moving stuff barefoot until I was told I had to put yeah, on that's shoes. Fair enough, but why the hell is she barefoot in a restaurant? I don't know. That's what I was gonna say. Was <laughs> it's like I've done stuff. I've climbed up my ladder, working in my house without shoes on. However, it's again, it's it's a health code violation to I have. Know, probably no, it, no, probably no, it, it is. is. You need to have proper footwear to work in a kitchen or around food because it is seen as an unsanitary, uh, mm. unsanitary. Technically, I think if you're in any kind of food service, you have to have uh, non like non skid shoes. Like you, yeah, you need to have like, shoes. Yeah, and also you have to wear like you have to have socks, uh, non slip soles, and they also be have to be. Uh, like kitchen rated, so you right. want to go in there with sandals. You have to wear a specific footwear in there because if not, if a health code uh, well, person came in, they... they would get fined. Yeah. So I guarantee you, it was partial of that, and also what you're saying about you know using something that she wasn't supposed to be on. Yeah. Well, th- this the the look he gave was like a standard look that he had given like throughout the thing of like trying to act like a tough guy, and I was here's like, my wow. eye of God. Yeah. You know, I'm like. Dude, you don't scare me. You know, basically just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Again, like as we said, tuck your chain and walk away. Yeah. So that's basically the 12 tribes, folks. Uh, Who feels love dirty? Love them, hate them. Yeah. You know what I hate the most about this? What's that? There is no fucking closure to this because they still no. exist. Still exist. Still out there. Still doing what they do. It makes me feel like we're going to come back and talk about this next week and the week after and forever and fuck Fuck, fuck, fuck. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. No, I, 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 like I said, you know, I was like going into this blind, didn't know anything about uh, them, but I was like, hey, you know what? This is a group that's in Vermont. That's kind of cool. I like doing things about Vermont. It, you know, last time we did this, it was Israel fucking keys. He's an asshole. No. <laughs> we, we talked about the train thing. No, but know. I mean, the last time we had something where something like yeah. came here and we're like, oh, that happened here. Let's check that out. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so a little bit of show code. I was ready to tear you a fucking new one throughout this whole thing. Because I thought you literally picked this just because you had a vendetta against like one part of this whole article. And I was like, if you don't have your fucking shit in order, I'm going to tear you apart. Because, like, for me, like, again, because my experiences have been different. Mm -hmm. And then it was hearing you talk about this, us talking off air, doing my own, like, little research, as I said before. And more I found out about it, the more I was like, yeah, I need to put in, like, a little more footwork in this. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, all this is is very valid. That's why throughout this whole thing, and this is one of the reasons why I love this show is 
doing this kind of thing, my opinions, like with anything, changes over with more information that you get. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where, like I said, I was like, all right, man, I'm going to fucking tear you a new one for making fun of these people. They make goddamn good food. I love their mate tea. I love all this stuff. And I think the farm table thing's cool. And, the, you know, they're all self-enclosed because fuck this, man. We're being independent. We're being, you know, we're making our own money. We're doing things our own way. And then all of a sudden it's like, that is literally the, the candy coating on the shit pill. And, and the thing is, yep. is, is, like I said. Like, and this is, like, I'll be honest with you. You, you fucking changed my job, view man. upon it because now I know this. And also from what I looked into it of like, as you also said, if you're not a part of them, they treat you one of two ways. Mm -hmm. If you are a part of them, they treat you one of two ways. It's either we'll treat you at this high level or we're going to treat you as that shit that's on the bottom of your shoe that's been there for a couple of days. And you don't really know what the fuck it is, but it's not going anywhere. So he's like, fuck it. It's with me now. Yeah. And if you're a person that goes to like their restaurants or whatever it is. They see you as, okay, this is just a, a ends to the means, you know, means to the ends. You're like, we're getting cash out of them. So we have to be polite. We have to be, yep. have to be professional. put on. Yeah. There's a certain obligation here yeah. because this is affords us to do what we want to do on our own terms. But again, behind these closed doors, no one knows what's going on because behind these closed doors, we keep our shit in tight. Yeah. And then to find all this out and other stuff we've talked about that it's a little too deep for us to want to talk about tonight, whatever. It's like, if you're not with them and you don't want to hear them, all right, then fine, fuck off. Like, if you just walk in there right off the street, just ask them a question, usually it's pretty abrasive if they find out that they're not getting anything out of you. Yeah. I, I, so it's, and as you put with a person's family, it's like, I never knew about that because I was like, oh, they're about well, family community. If you want to be a part of it, fine. And I took it as like the Amish thing. I was like, yeah, you're on your own. Have fun. But we'll still be doing our own thing, not you don't come back we're gonna fuck the rest of your family up yeah and like, like i said you know that's that's fucking dark like i said i didn't you know i didn't go into it with it, anything i didn't really know much of anything about it yeah, you, and then you didn't, you didn't have an agenda yeah, coming into this yeah. so you're just agenda, looking for a topic yeah and, and then all of a sudden like you know i saw this stuff and i was like you you fucking assholes and and i i dealt with them a little bit I did kind of, you know, I was like, oh, you know, they're hippy dippy, whatever, you know, don't, sort of don't thing. Don't they do like hug circles and shit? Yeah. yeah. What's the I mean, problem with a hug circle? Nothing. I'm just curious because I, mean, I, I know they do them like certain times of the day or whatever. Yeah. When you hug, your arms are in a circle. Well, yeah, they, that's fair enough. They, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, you're, you're, if, you know, your religion's your religion. Right. Don't, yeah, I, absolutely. I don't, I, don't, I don't diss on you for whatever. Yep. But when you cross a line, it, it just kind of sets something off inside of me. Where it's like now you're not okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't fucking like you anymore. And I know, like I said, I like the whole you know farm table thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, 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 like your buddy, you know. Hey, he, he's sober good now. Good on him. He got sober. But I don't know where he is anymore now, and they won't him. tell yeah. me. Yeah. And then I'm like, I've known this kid for. God, at that time I knew him for like five, six years, and now they're like, oh, we can't tell you. And I'm like, this is his name. This is his full name. This is what he looks like. Look at me. This is essentially what he looks like. Like, you tell him you don't know where he is? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. no. We just, you know, we just can't. Yeah, they don't They don't want to tell you nothing. And it's like, oh. And it's one of those things. It's like, holy shit, yeah. I do see your point. Yeah. Oh, shit, I see your point. The abuse towards children. Fuck that shit. Yeah. That's fucking horse shit. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know anything about that. I thought it was like, oh, yeah, they make them work in the fields. Okay, I've worked in my parents' garden. I work, you know, family farm. Okay, whatever. Who hasn't done that? And it's like, oh, this is different. This is not not what I thought it was. Fuck. Yeah. yeah I, I, Again, I, you're right. Absolutely. Like, like I said, I'm done. I'm glad I'm done with these guys. I'm glad I don't we're done with these wanna, yeah. too. You know, maybe maybe my next cult I'll talk about. You I know, maybe you I'll be stop happy, talking about the, cults. The, the, the happy ending will be they all fucking die. <laughs> No, but that's in, but those are innocents that die. No, well, no, no, no. I'm no, talking the, like the, the happy know. ending for a cult would be everybody gets out of it, and the people that started all fucking die. Yes, <laughs> there we go. But that doesn't happen. There's no, no such thing as a happy ending with a cult. No. Well, the dude is cult where everybody acts like you know the dude from Hey is Big that Lebowski. A, is that a cult or is that just like a movement and gathering or something like that? I don't know. Apparently, Star Wars is a cult. That's a religious <sighs> movement. Whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, but you know, like I said, that's 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 that, and 
<sighs> Thank Deep God. breath. Christ. You oh, hey. killed it. Good job. Cheers Thank to you. you, sir. I'm let's let's clankies. Tink. Boom. Clanks. Boom. You guys can't. Mm, one more. Go over. Bam. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm proud of you, man. This is a fucking killer episode. Don't well, take too deep a breath because it's not going to get any fucking lighter for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and like I said, this oh, this is uh. Jesus. Well, I think. Spoiler. Halfway through this, we are going to have a cool episode. Yes, we're yeah. going to get through two parts of our next thing, take a break, then do so- to do something we're, fucking excellent. We're going to do a special episode. Yeah. That's pr- that one actually will probably come out earlier than a Wednesday, too. Hmm. Let's have it come out on a specific day. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Oh, are we going to? No, no, never mind. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so these are episodes, you know, where you definitely need to just... You need to do a little bit of outside homework on your own yeah. to formulate your own opinion. Yes. This is our, like the three of ours from what we've done. Go out there, experience it yourself. I know we had a listener that like wrote in some episodes. Yeah, Trist, or whatever, or Tristan some... Pope, our buddy from Australia, sent us some information. And it was, uh, it's weird because it's pretty right boilerplate. Like, boom, boom, boom. This is what happens here. This is It's all the same thing. It doesn't matter. On the other side of the fucking world, it's all boom, all boom, boom, exactly that, the they're same. They're all following that instruction manual of how to be a douchebag. Yeah, and like, shit, we had the same story. One from Australia, one from Germany. A little girl getting mm-hmm. her ass whooped because she was pretending to be a fucking airplane. Yeah, I was... That's I, crazy. And I kind of was blown away. I was like, wow, someone actually wants to help me out when, and, like, get me some information that we're in a country where the, you know, they've had this. I was like, oh, sweet. I was this like, is that's why so cool. Li- this is why our listeners are badass. I know. They, are. they right. tried it and stuck with it. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Try went back once. to the buffet of <laughs> crazy shit. But they didn't say try it once, never again. No, yeah, but it's cool. No, so, I was, I was, I was blown away. You know, thank you, Tristan, for you know wanting to pitch in and help out. You know, that was, oh, that was so cool. And another thing, uh, Tristan does his own podcast. It's a, a bar, a competition barbecue show. Oh, um, and yes, he, that's yeah, right. he, I, I used to ask me like five or six times, like, dude, can I put, po- I post a link to it on the page? I'm like, fuck yeah, Just no, tag you me can't because I want to. You have to, to it. send us samples. <laughs> Figure out a way how to do it. Send it to us. I want I didn't. I didn't realize. <laughs> I just want that barbecue sauce. Fucking barbecue, like competition barbecue shit, is huge in Australia. I thought it was just like a southern thing here. No, it's everywhere. Wow. Fucking awesome. Hey, Everybody man. has their own style, man. Yeah. No, I'm, I know he's gonna listen to this. Kangaroo barbecue it. I want to try it. Ooh. I don't think. You <laughs> Give can. me a wombat. Yes, you can. You can fucking hunt kangaroo, as far as I know. People hit them with cars all the time. What about a wombat? Ooh. A wombat? No, no. Wombats are too fucking cute to eat, dude. Ah. How about a koala? Mm. Yeah, get them wet and they look like goddamn demons. <laughs> no, you get them wet and they <laughs> fucking create gremlins. Pretty much, yeah. Um, well, if, if anything doesn't drive you to uh, studio.com to uh, get a pair of headphones, listen to these past couple episodes. Definitely should because these are episodes where you do not want to have other people listening to them because you know, they'll be like, what the fuck are you listening not only to? That, if you listen to some sweet ass fucking music right? or stream some shit. You don't want to share it with nobody on the yeah. bus, the tram, your car, or in, you know where you're sitting because you're like, "Fuck you, guy! This is my thing." And it's, you know what? Right. If you're in a cult where you're not allowed to have headphones, they make in the earbuds. So if you have a little bit longer hair, you can pop them sons of bitches in, put your hair over it. Yeah, you don't even fucking see them. They are the Neva, and how will they charge them if they're not allowed to have this? They shit? have a charging case that holds four additional charges. I was just going to go, how are they going to charge them in general when you know, oh, everything's you gotta, unlocking key? You got a USB thing, you'll be all right. Not, but, dude, how the fuck are you going to plug that into your oil lamp? <gasps> oh, unless you got a solar panel. Excuse me, but I have they two might. Bluetooth oil lamps downstairs. They're LED lights, but they look like oil lamps. They might. That's pretty <laughs> never know. Baller. They're pretty fucking cool. But uh, get your headphones, your earbuds, put them in your, in your basket, and uh, we're going to try that one more time. Yeah, some yeah, that on a motorcycle as well. Oh! I told I told Shelby because we had some asshole come tear ass up through here at about 85 miles an hour the other night. I was up here working on stuff and I'm like, I'm buying fucking spike strips. You can't because you're on a main highway. She goes, where are you going to find them? And I sent her a link fucking two seconds later. Amazon has nine foot sections for 26 bucks. And I was like, speed by my house, dick hole. <laughs> so well, you live I'll on ta- the main drag. You leave them on the other side of the road with a fucking rope. No, if you're dude. coming down the hill, you just fucking yank it. Boom. You keep pulling until it's on the lawn. Yeah, and you have a kick from that side, so that way you don't get trouble. That's right. Yeah. Fuck or those guys. In the fucking, those guys' house, fuck them. <laughs> they, know, they have kids, and they know they do some stupid Speed shit. Speed past my house, asshole. <laughs> so <laughs> take, your, uh, take your earbuds, your headphones, put them in your check in your basket, and at checkout, put in a discount code of DarkWindows15 Dark Windows 15. and get you 15% off because Studio loves you. We love you. 
you know, we want you to have those head headphones or earbuds. And also, speaking of loving you, Seth's got uh, another place that loves you and wants to give you. You got stuff, don't you? I was wondering what the fuck you were doing. <laughs> oh, I, I was trying. Like, to... That was a pretty good transition. And like normal, you got to fuck it up. <laughs> the, the thing is, I can edit all that out. I was trying to say, you got Seth, then I'll take care of the social media shits. It's like, I'll wrap it. Oh, I was actually literally using that as our shitty transition. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and you know what? High fives. It's all staying in. <laughs> Boom. Not this part. This should all go. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so as I said at the head of the show... If you have 12 cultists because you're painting along with this whole crazy ass story and you used your hobby holder, throw those motherfuckers away. But keep the hobby holder. The reason why you keep the hobby holder is because it is the perfect hobby tool. Like I said in the beginning, it's a handle and base combination. You can get your handle in a different color. You can get your rotating base in a different color. You can get varieties of all the colors. What's great about it is, like I said before, it uses a standard soda bottle cap. So if you like drink Mountain Dew, Pepsi, Coke, it does not matter. Those little weird water bottle caps does not work with those. I'm sorry. But you get rid of those little 12 cultists and you burn them to the ground and say, fuck you, little guys. But you get your other little miniatures from other game sources. It doesn't matter. You put those on the soda bottle caps and you paint those guys up. You put that fun stuff in your checkout cart. Put in the promo code Broadstone. Save yourself 10% off the entire order. But if you're like, hmm, but I have no miniatures. I have no cultists I want to paint and then potentially throw away and burn to the fucking ground and send them all to hell. Have no fear. Well, head on over to Dicehead.com, home of Dicehead Games, where you can pick up some miniatures, you can pick up some board games, you can pick up some card games or comics. It does not matter. They're your one-stop shop for all your geekery needs. Ooh, geekery. I'm keeping it. Every time we stop for that, I like it. And you can pick out a variety of fun stuff. And you know what? They have amazing prices. They ship anywhere. And the people there are really super cool. And I know that because I met them. I related to them. I met them at Adepticon. Yeah, they're cool people, though. They're cool peoples. And if you have miniatures that you just want to get rid of because you don't feel like burning them to the ground and you don't want to use the shady eBay or the even worse Craigslist, yes. head on over there, too, because at the bottom of the page, they have a little section that's called the Miniature Trade-In Program. You take pictures of that stuff. You email it to them. Within two to three business days, because they want to do a bunch of research, make sure they give you the best price, they will give you the best price in an email and let you know you can put it towards store credit for whatever you like. Does not matter if the miniatures are assembled, unassembled, if they're on the sprue, off the sprue, painted, unpainted, half assembled, does not matter. Like I said, they take everything. If they won't take it, that's because, you know, maybe maybe you've done something you shouldn't have done with them. Don't know. Don't judge. But, hey, man, they got everything there. Yep, funny, so, funny story real quick with uh, Shane and Melissa. Yes. Shane from uh, Dice Ed. Yes. They came up for Comic-Con last October. Yeah, New York City Comic-Con. Yeah, Girl. they traveled with a giant Rubbermaid tote full of board games. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and we sat at my aunt's house and we played... Oh geez, what did we play? We played uh, oh, we played like 20 yeah. rounds of Secret Hitler because that game is fucking That's amazing. Fucking... It's one of those like... Who's the bad guy game? And yeah. you have to like lie to the other people. It's great. Uh-huh. And then we play. Yeah, I feel like there's another game that I used to play with that with uh, some other people. Yes. And uh, it worked out really well when because I'm like, I'm not them. Stoic. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm so random. Like, I just like Pop-Tarts and I walk away. I'm like, oh, it can't be him because he's crazy. But anyway, you can go check us out at ageofradio.org forward slash dark windows where you can find all of our episodes. You can find all of our sponsors on there. And if you go to ageofradio.org and you check out the bazaar, you can find all of the station sponsors and all that cool stuff, including uh, on it. Human Optimization website. They the, also got some Star Wars kettlebells because I know the whole May the Star Trek be with you day. Yeah, we're actually recording <laughs> this on Star Trek day. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Boom. Uh-huh. Boom. 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 <clears throat> Godspeed, Chewbacca. He just died. So. Oh. Yeah. Peter Mayhew. That was Peter Matthews. No. No. I didn't realize how tall that dude is. He was like seven foot five. He was huge. Yeah, and he lasted pretty long for a big dude. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. And you can go to Age Radio and check out all the other cool shows on there, including Dark Dark Windows. Yeah, that's awesome. Dark Windows were on there. (laughs) Surprising. Who knew? Yeah. um, 
Color Me Dead, who just did their 100th episode. Congratulations, ladies. Kevin's brother, Ben, does a show called Diamonds and Roses. It's a Portland, Oregon-based baseball podcast. You've got uh, True Crime Trucker with Michael Pritt, which is a fucking awesome show. Mm -hmm. He just... he's either coming up on or just had his one-year episode, so kick ass. And then you can also check us out on Facebook. We're at Dark Windows Podcast on Facebook. We are on Instagram. I'm getting better with Twitter, and they're both at Dark Windows Pod. Um, I am on Instagram at kcarlton87. I'm on Twitter. You just punch in Kevin Carlton, and I'll pop up. I'm taking a knee in front of Darth Vader. It's pretty easy to find. <laughs> you fucking nerd. Fuck yeah. Seth, you're on Instagrams. I am on the Instagrams at Broadstone underscore creations. You can hit me up at any time because I am like a 14-year-old girl. I live on that motherfucker. And that's the only place you find me. And Kevin. I'm on it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> No shit. Where are you? Uh, I'm on I'm Instagram. <laughs> I, I, I'm on it all. <laughs> I'm on Instagram at Speedy802. I'm also on Facebook, uh, Kevin Hire. So if you want to hit me up and ask me questions, feel fucking free. Definitely. I'll answer them, you know. And don't we, feel don't be afraid. And we do also have a Patreon account which we are mm. trying to get some people interested in because as as everybody knows there are some expenses to running podcasts and the cool thing is with Patreon is if you donate money to us you get some cool shit in return. We've got, Not only that, it all goes right back into the show. Exactly. None Everything. of this goes to like you know paying a light bill or anything. This is going to upgrading uh, equipment, know. upgrading software, you know, shit like that. Um, Apparently, buy me a new mic because yes. you guys say it's terrible. And I'm like, yeah. I love this motherfucker. Well, the thing is, like, we could replace it and you wouldn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would because I got like things stuck to it. No, sticking. dude, the mic stands fine. The microphone, on the other hand, you wouldn't know. I'm, I'm I'm taking <laughs> mental images. But yeah, we've got four different tiers on there. Um, the twenty dollar tier is by far the best value because you mm. get everything. And like Seth just said, it's liver eating fucking Johnson, mm. who's a badass. Yeah, check, you get to be liver eating how, Johnson how, on an episode. How, how can they check it out on Patreon? You go to Patreon.com and just uh, go into your search bar and punch in Dark Windows Podcast. You'll find us. Yeah, yeah. and you can see all the tiers. Yeah, all the tiers um, and all that good stuff. That's right. So. so with that being said, oh, thank God this is over. Next week is going to be fucking rough, too. Yeah. But just because you can't see out into like the Like John dark, Cena, you can't see me? <laughs> huh. Just because... We're, you know, we can't see. And you know, can't, you can't see in the dark and see you. you know. No? Just because you can't see out into the there dark. Isn't ra- there isn't rat poop in the raisin bread? Ooh. I always thought ra- uh, raisins looked like rabbit shit, but that's just me. <laughs> no, man, because he was talking about the mouse shit. I know. The, the little girl, and I just went up to rats because if they got mice, you know they got rats. Because these no. motherfuckers are living out in the woods and shit. Let- pro tip, pest control pro tip, rats and mice don't you, you don't very often live in the same place because they don't get along with each other. Okay. Just because you can't there see There isn't mouse the- shit in the fucking raisin bread <laughs> because they don't procreate. Mm, fair enough. Just because you can't see out into the dark. Doesn't mean you're not going to be aqua blazing. Dude, I want to do some aqua fucking blazing. We can right go out in the backyard and aqua blazing oh, after this if you want. Sweet. <laughs> Rock on, Clark. Anyway, continue. <laughs> no, dude, do this. Let's go. Just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you. Don't eat gruel in a fucking hippie <sighs> commune. Love you, kisses. Bye. It's not mate. It's mate. That's why I fucking be telling you. <laughs> <laughs>